Hello YouTube, welcome back to the shop. On this episode of What's In Yours, we will dissect the brushless DC motor for the NAND robot D5 Plus 2.0. And then we will also be solving the mystery of how this scooter determines the speed on your speedometer on the throttle controller. So let's get started. All right, folks, here we are with the brushless DC motor for the NAND robot. D5 Plus 2.0 torn apart. And before you start cringing at the fact that I took apart the motor, um, just be well aware of that I'm more than qualified to take apart this motor, at least on paper I am. And so nevertheless, um, I took this motor, motor apart for a couple of reasons. Number one, I wanna show you the inside. We're gonna go through some of the components and maybe some of the troubles you could have uh, with this motor. And then number two, what sparked my curiosity is because I was wondering how are they determining or reading the speed of this scooter because there's some contradicting things about this scooter that I, I wanted to figure out and I think I have the mystery solved but not all the way. So let's go through this and, and work through this together and try to figure this out. All right, so first of all, we need to understand a little bit about how a brushed and a brushless DC motor works. And it often helps to explain how a, how a brushed DC motor works first, as you know, they were used before in, in a lot of applications and even they're still used in let's say some of the cheaper power tools and, and things like that. But I think mostly they're going towards brushless uh, you know, of course, the brushless motors run more efficient, cooler. And a brush DC motor uh, has a permanent magnet on the outside of its structure with a spinning armature on the inside. So the permanent magnet, which are stationary on the outside, are called the stator, which would be let me see this right here. All right. And then the armature, which rotates and contains the electromagnetic magnet, is called the rotor, which is right in here. Okay. In a, in a brush DC motor, the motor spins 180 degrees when an electric current is run through the armature. So to go a little bit further, the poles of the electromagnet <clears throat> must flip. The brushes, as the rotor spins, makes contact with the stator, flipping the field and allowing the rotor to spin a full 360 degrees. So if you've never seen a brush, this is what they call a brush on a brush, brushed motor. Okay, And basically what this would do is this would sit on the uh, Sorry, on the uh, commutator and right like this and then it would spin and, and cause the motor to rotate well after a while these brushes would wear out and then your motor would quit working and typically in a lot of power tools and stuff uh, that can be replaced but a lot of people just throw it away instead of replacing it, but these are really super cheap. And I'll give you an example of a brushed motor. So here we have a drill, and I'm gonna show you right in here. When I, turn, when I hit the switch on this drill, you're gonna see sparks in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. See some of those sparks right there? That's those brushes. Um, hitting that uh, commutator and eventually they wear out and you can replace them or just replace the drill. A lot of times on the cheaper power tools, they're, uh, they're easy to uh, replace because of the price point. So, uh, so let's get into brushless motor. So a brushless DC motor is essentially flipped inside out, eliminating the need for uh, the brush to flip the electromagnetics. Um, electromagnetic field. So in a brushless DC motor, the permanent magnets on the rotor, right here, and then, all right, and then the electromagnets are on the stator, 
which is this right here. So these are magnets, these are magnets. And then a computer charges the electromagnetics in the stator to rotate the rotor a full 360 degrees. Um, because of these advantages, brushless DC motors are often used in modern devices uh, for like low noise, uh, heat dissipation, and um, especially in devices running continuously. Uh, let's say like uh, your washing machine or air conditioning, uh, the motor on this. Uh, so they're, they're really efficient. And so brushless DC motors provide uh, several distinct uh, advantages over types of electric motors, which is why they're made in, in a, so many household appliances and in, they use them in factories and they use them in applications like this. So very efficient motor. So enough about the brushless and brush DC motor lesson. Let's go how I took this apart. So of course I had to take the rotor off and then, uh, you know, uh, so I took it off the scooter and if you want to see how the motor is taken or the wheel and the motor is taken off of the um, of the scooter, you can go back to one of my uh, tire replacement videos. I show you how to take the motor and off and, and the tire to replace it flat. And then, of course, I had to remove the rotor and then I took the housing off of the uh, motor which you, you want to be careful with because in this motor you have a, a sill here that goes over the shaft right here and you don't want to mess up this sill because that, that helps with waterproofing. Okay, so you don't want to do that. Uh, you want, want to be mindful of that. Let me hook this thing back up on here. Okay. And then <clears throat> from, from the housing, there's a, there's a bearing. There's a bearing right here. And now that bearing is a, uh, what would it say on it? A 6022, I think, or 6202 bearing. It's a Chinese bearing, um, and it's a pretty cheap bearing. And a lot of times those bearings go bad. And when they go bad, they get flat spots on them, and you'll hear like marbles rolling around in the bearing. So that's one thing. If, if you're hearing some noises, some unusual noises coming out from your motor, that could be one of the reasons why. And I looked at it. And it looks to be, you, you can take this bearing off. There's also another bearing inside here on the other side. And you can take those bearings out and replace them with some more high quality bearings if, if they do go out on you. And uh, one thing to note too is on this aluminum casing, it has a stamp mark TF, which I looked it up. And all, all this information you can find on the internet. I mean, it's it's not something, you know, I just... I know, I just looked it up, did the research, but it's labeled TF right here. And that's uh, uh, initials for Tough Factory, which they make aluminum casting parts for like Mitsubishi, Honda, things like that. And then also one thing to note too, that there is a little bit of this uh, sealant around the edge here. And you're going to want to scrape that off and reapply maybe some RTV so uh, you can help with the waterproofing of this motor. All right, so moving along with this. So we have the, the bearing, and then right underneath that, we have the wires coming in, coming in through the shaft, and then um, we have some sealant here to protect water from getting in through the shaft and into the motor. So that's, that's how they seal that up. And so that's how they seal that up from water coming in. Now what's interesting is there's only three wires coming in here. And all right, so before we get into that, let's let's finish up what so you have magnets here, okay? And then you have magnets on the outside and it puts it puts power to the motor and that's what it causes it to rotate. And let me um grab a wrench here. 
and I'll show you how they rotate within each other. See how that moves? These two pieces move against each other. That's how it spins the motor, and that's how you go. So, I mean, it's pretty pretty simple uh, thing on, I don't know, how this operates. And so, going back to the wires here. So, there's three wires. It's a three-phase motor. And I search inside this motor high and low. There is no hall sensors inside this motor. Now, so how, if there's no hall sensors in here, which hall sensors, um, they're usually a circuit board in here with some... Uh, with the hall sensors connected to it, and that's off of the magnetic force as it rotates, that's what reads your speed. So if there's no hall sensors inside this motor, then how is it reading the speed? And in the controller settings and in the manual, and I'm going to show you the difference here, rates, what was it at here? Speed center speed sensor function do not change it at will p3 so you cannot change that setting the default is zero but if you go into the controller it's set at one and you cannot change that setting so that's telling me that there's a speed sensor somewhere somewhere in here that's reading the speed and then that displays it on your uh, speedometer on the throttle controller so it's not using hall sensors, which it says here, magnetic poles in the hub motor do not change it at will. Default is 10. Well, there's no hall sensors in this. I looked, at, looked in this motor high and low. I, I stuck a little mirror, little mirror down in here to look for any type of circuit boards, blah, blah, blah. So there's no hall, uh, hall sensors. So there's a speed sensor somewhere on this scooter I don't know where. Maybe someone can help me out with that in the comments. But that's how it reads the speed of the scooter. So then, so that goes back to my point with, okay, well, usually I keep the hall sensor set at 10. And I don't change that. And then to get my speed to be accurate with GPS, I will change my tire size. And for this particular scooter, the D5 Plus 2.0, I had to change my tire size to six inches. But that messes with my distance. It doesn't read distance correctly. So now that I know that this motor does not have hall sensors in it, I'm going to adjust my speed to read with GPS from the hall sensors and then put my tires back to 10 inches. So that eliminates two problems. Number one, I put my tires back at 10 inches, then I can have an accurate distance or measurement for my odometer. And then number two, I can adjust those hall sensor uh, uh, numbers down to where it matches my GPS. And I can't remember if I had to go up on the sensors or go down on the sensors to match my GPS. So basically, I eliminated two problems uh, with that. And um, so that makes me feel good that now I'm going to be reading distance and speed more accurately. And I'm glad I took this motor apart to see if it has hall sensors. Now, let me show you what hall sensors typically look like in a motor so like my rs7 it has because uh, you know when i took this uh the the d5 plus apart the deck apart and looked in the battery i noticed that it didn't have the five hall sensor wires and i was just like man that's weird because my rs7 and and some other scooters had that in it and so this would be your hall sensor wires and there would be a, a circuit board on the motor here and it would have those five wires attached to it and then these would be your hall sensors, one, two, three, four, five. And that's what would be reading your speed. But this doesn't have it inside it. So it's reading it with a speed sensor because that's why they have it defaulted to one instead of zero. So hopefully that helps you out determining your speed and your distance more accurately. And then also too, hopefully this video helps you out with taking apart the motor inspecting it looking at looking at it 
And um, so let's go over some troubleshooting things. Since this is a three-phase motor, we're, we're getting a little bit more advanced troubleshooting here. But basically, you have three wires. And between those three wires, you should have an ohm reading or a resistance reading between both three wires. So let's, let's say that those wires are T1, T2, and T3. And I'll, and I'll write it out here for you. T2, T3. So if you take your meter and put it on continuity, you should, and so this is if you, if you were having issues with your motor and you wanted to troubleshoot it yourself. So you would take, let's, let's just say this is red, green, and yellow, which is the typical wires you see there. So you take your meter, put it on continuity, and you would go from T1 to T2, and it should give you a resistance value or ohm reading. Let's just say between here and here, you got six. Let's, that, this is just for pretend. And then between here and here, you should have six. And then between here and here, you should have six. So between T1, T2, you should have six. Between um, T1 and T2, so you should have six. And between T3 and T1, you should have six. And between, um, I'm sorry, hold on, I did that wrong. Sorry, I don't, I, I'll, hopefully I'm not confusing you. So between T1 and T2, you should have six. Between T1 and T3, you should have six. And between T2 and T3, you should have six. Now, if those values are any different from each other, then typically you might have some open windings or some burnt windings um, in your motor here. And then also another way to determine if your motor is burned up is if you take your meter from one of those leads and you take it to ground, so the casing of the motor. All right, so you would take your meter, putting on continuity, and you go from T1 to ground on your motor. So that's typically what you see a grounding um, symbol. But you go from T1 to your motor ground, and if you get a beeping noise from your continuity from your meter, that means one of these wires are shorted and it's touching the casing of the motor. And that's an easy way to determine if one of these wires got too hot and they broke open and they're touching the um, motor casing. So you could go from T1 to ground, you can go from T2 to ground, and you go from T3 to ground. If you don't get no continuity between all those, then your motor is good. If you hear that beeping noise, then your motor is bad, and then you want to replace it. Now let's talk about the expense of replacing this motor. So let's say if we had some bearings going bad, these particular bearings, or even uh, higher quality bearings, you can get off of Amazon or a whole slew of different places, and they're, they range from anywhere from 10 to $15 a piece. So if you were mechanically inclined and you felt confident to do that, you could replace these bearings and um, have new bearings in there and you'd be good to go. Now, if you have a shorted winding on this motor, you're gonna have to replace it. And even if you don't feel confident of replacing any bearings or replacing the bearings on this motor, you can always just order a new motor. But so we got a $15 bearing here, or you can spend, uh, I mean, you can resource it, but directly from NAM Robot on their website, this motor is about $250. So, you know, depending on how your pockets are and depends how mechanically inclined you are, uh, that's going to be the decision that you have to make. So hopefully you find the information in this video helpful. Um, as always, I want us to be more confident in our troubleshooting and have an enjoyment out of these scooters. And so that's why I make these videos. So hopefully you find these videos informative and I'm going to go and put this thing back together. And until next time, please subscribe, like, share, hit the bell notification. And as always, ride safe.